The World War 1 PvP event was one of the largest and most influential PvP events the Game of Outside has ever had. The event took place across six of the seven servers in the game, including the African, Asian, European, North American, Oceania, and South American servers. It also involved millions of players and forever changed the political, economic, social, cultural, and warfare matters of the game. Yet the exact reasons for the player disputes remains convoluted to many, and boring to many more. But the causes of the event are important, as the World War I event shows us that arbitrary political disputes between players can escalate into mass cross-server conflict. Welcome to Outside Law. The first thing that people may not know about the event is that it lasted either four or five in-game years depending on how you count. Starting in 1914 AD, with AD being in-game years referring to after this dude called Jesus spawned into the game, a character that remains controversial even in the current meta, but anyway, the faction stopped most if not all conflict in 1918, but peace was not fully signed until each major faction took part in the Treaty of Versailles event that the German faction agreed to in 1919. We will address this treaty event later, but needless to say it put major debuffs on the German faction's army and economy. Therefore, this signing puts the literal end of the war in 1919. However, the actual PvP event began in 1914. The origins of the event are confusing and complicated, being the result of many intertwining clan and faction relations as well as relation scores between individual players. Yet, many players can now agree that the spark of the event was the assassination of a player who was set to lead the Austro-Hungarian faction once the current leader either suffered a permadeath or left the position. The player had the username Franz Ferdinand and he was targeted by the Black Hand clan of players to hopefully unite the Austro-Hungarian territories in the South Slav region into a Yugoslavia faction that did not yet exist but many players wanted to create. The assassination itself was a bit of a mess. A player with the username most players in Outside have names specific to their region and region's language, so I'm not going to attempt to pronounce them. Anyway, hmm, was originally going to use the assassination ability in combination with a bomb to blow up Ferdinand's car mount. However, he failed the check, exploding another car. He then attempted to use the suicide ability with a cyanide pill and jumping his character into a river. However, it was summer and the river was only about 130 pixels deep. Also, he failed the suicide check and the pill was old, so he only got the vomiting trait and his character was incapacitated and then got ganked by the police forces. The actual assassin, Gavrilo Princip, heard the assassination failed and waited outside a shop to kill Ferdinand on his return journey. However, he was only in the right position at the right time because the driver of Ferdinand's mount took a wrong turn and stopped abruptly to turn around. Princip then used the assassination ability with a pistol and succeeded the check, killing Ferdinand and his wife. However, he then tried to use the suicide ability with the same pistol, but nearby guards cancelled the attempt and gave him the arrested debuff. This provided the casus belli for the Austro-Hungarian faction to invade Serbia to bring them under their control. Because of this initial PvP action, the Russian faction also declares war on Austro-Hungary to defend Serbia because of their shared Slavic trait. The German faction, prior to these PvP challenges, had promised Austro-Hungary as many soldier mains as they wanted in any PvP confrontation. This was called the Blank Check, and it meant that the German and Austro-Hungary factions were essentially allied, and the German faction, as well as its politician mains, declared war on Russia and the Kingdom of Serbia. Due to more faction alliances, France is aligned with the Russia faction, and also declares war on Germany and Austro-Hungary. However, these declarations also mean Italy is on the side of Germany and Austro-Hungary because of their existing clan tag, the Triple Alliance. In order to gain momentum in the PvP event and hopefully knock out the France faction, a field marshal called Alfred von Schlieffen came up with a plan to raid the France faction, which involved first going through the part of the European server map which the Belgium faction was on in order to get to France. However, the British faction was allied to the Belgium faction in order to balance the meta in the European server and make sure neither the French or German factions got too powerful. Schlieffen died before the PvP event started, but German general mains attempted to carry out the plan anyway, anticipating little resistance from Britain, Belgium, and France. However, this did not happen, and the PvP event broke out into a long, arduous combat that would take four in-game years to end. All of these confusing and seemingly globally inconsequential events sparked a massive PvP event in Europe, but also involved the Africa, Asia, Oceania, and North American servers. 
Some players in Europe have migrated servers and used the imperialism ability on the maps of other servers, giving some European factions control across multiple servers. The German faction was often jealous of how far factions like France, Britain and Russia had used their imperialism ability and wished that this PvP event would be the opportunity to secure these territories on other servers as loot drops, obviously without consulting the players that actually lived there, just as the other European factions had done before them. The warfare meta was complicated during this event, but, broadly speaking, the PvP event was split into two PvP zones, the Western Front and the Eastern Front. Due to the faction's positions on the map, the Western Front mostly comprised of soldier mains from the British, French, Belgian and German factions, including many from each faction's colonial territories and other servers who migrated just for the event. On the Eastern Front, players were mainly from the Russian, German and Austro-Hungarian factions along with the Ottoman faction who joined the Triple Alliance clan and also fought on the African server. We will begin with the Western Front zone because it is what most players today are familiar with. German players initially launched a successful raid into Paris, beating French and British soldier players and the British clan the British Expeditionary Force. These players then regroup and push German players back from Paris, but both sides lose momentum and form the new meta of trench warfare, which made the combat incredibly slow and frustrating, and everyone agreed it really ruined the combat system. Whilst these raid events are going on, the Italian faction ends up backstabbing the Triple Alliance clan and invaded the Austro-Hungarian faction in 1915 AD. In the Eastern Front Zone, German, Austro-Hungarian, Turkish and Russian players don't adopt this new meta for Eastern Front raid events and have a much more mobile combat system. German and Russian areas of control on the map go back and forth with Russia massively defeating a large group of Austro-Hungarian players in the Brusilov offensive event. The Romanian faction joins the event with Russia's players, but they both get pushed back on the map. The Russian Empire fails to maintain their political stability meters in their faction menu, which eventually results in two faction leader changes and two radical government type changes, to the provisional government type and then the Soviet government type, each one coming with different traits. The provisional government had the negative trait of continues war despite huge casualties, and the Soviet government had the trait will negotiate peace even if it gives huge concessions. The Soviet faction therefore surrendered to the German faction, but this was during another PvP event in their own faction, however the Russian Civil War event is a different lore analysis for another time. In this surrender, the Soviet faction lost a lot of territory that the Russian Empire had, spawning a few new nations on the European server. With the Russia faction out of the event, German players are drawn to the western portion of the map to overwhelm the trench meta. But both sides have been putting research points into developing new military techs and they unlocked new player unlockables like tanks and planes which entered the meta but progress was still slow and these techs were still fairly basic. However, in 1917 a faction entered the war from a different server and would come to attack German players on the side of the Triple Entente faction. Many players hoped that this was the turning point in the event as the German faction no longer would have the resources to fight against this emerging power from the new world servers. The Brazilian faction. Oh yeah, and some American players also migrated servers to help the French and British. The German faction decided to try and win before too many of these players managed to migrate servers. They started the Spring Offensive Raid event, which they won, but it resulted in many player deaths, and of course, the game has permadeath, so it was costly for both sides. In return, the British, French, and American factions launched the Hundred Days Offensive, which was the beginning of the end for the World War I PvP event. They regained a lot of areas of control on the map, and many German players realised they had lost the event, worrying the politician mains that their political stability meters were too low, which led to surrender in 1918. A formal end to the event was actually signed in 1919, by leaders from most of the major factions. The agreement heavily restricted Germany in the general meta and, some players say, influenced the eventual start of the sequel to the World War I PvP event just two in-game decades later. The Japanese faction was also present due to their involvement on the Asia server, taking areas controlled by Germany and Austro-Hungary. Control of African territories by people on the European server changed hands as raid events occurred in those regions of the map throughout the war. No considerations were made on letting the players in the Africa server lead their own factions. The Middle East server was also divided up amongst the winners, with the collapse of the Ottoman faction and the players there again were not allowed to lead their own territories. The Treaty of Versailles trait therefore applied to many major powers, providing bonuses for some and negatives for others. 
For instance, Germany could no longer apply militarization bonuses to their Rhineland region. Whereas France gained the reparations trait, receiving large amounts of in-game currency from the defeated factions to rebuild their destroyed infrastructure. The counter trait, paying off reparations, was eventually removed by the German faction, unbelievably, in 2010 AD, settling their debts with the European server. The trait also applied a new mechanic to the political players in the game. That was the League of Nations mechanic that allowed all the factions across many different servers to agree on issues that affected the whole game map. The American faction introduced the mechanic, but decided not to utilise it, and left the other factions to deal with their mess. The World War I PvP event forever changed the warfare, political, economic, social, and cultural meta of the game. The Treaty of Versailles ended the event, but did so at a cost upsetting large portions of the player base and not ensuring the long-term stop to PvP events on the European server. The event brought technological innovations which changed how the game would be played for many players, but it also remained difficult for those returning from a war that seemed to begin from distant and arbitrary reasons. In the aftermath, attitudes changed and many players were uncertain of the future. Players were increasingly concerned at the state of the game, and the decades that followed marked unique political instability felt by many nations across the game's map. Moreover, although some players gave this event the subtitle The PvP Event to End All PvP Events, especially within the British faction, the event did little of the sort, and the European server, as well as the whole map, would soon collapse into another multi-server conflict within those same players' lifespans. New players in the game today can recognise times of uncertainty and political instability. We can only hope a new PvP event doesn't break out because of complex political events and alliances beyond the control of most players.